Hello, my name is Stephen Friedman. I'm the Assistant Dean of Admissions for the University of Kansas School of Law. Um, we are in, uh, I don't know, episode 14 or 15 of the our summer series of videos. Uh, we've really enjoyed doing these, and uh, today's a really good one. Um, we have three uh, great guests. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, Donna Holtine from uh, Parking. She's the director of the Parking uh, Services Office. Uh, we have Heidi Garcia from the Watkins Center, which uh, deals with health. And we have uh, Macy Burkett. Um, is Macy here? There's Macy right there, up top. And Macy Burkett uh, from uh, Recreation Services. Um, I promised each of our three guests that, um, you know, we would try to limit their time on this meeting. We're really thankful for them taking part of their day out um, uh, to do this kind of uh, new kind of interaction with the incoming class. Um, but, uh, so what we'll do is we'll go in a round and I'll talk to, um, uh, each of those three individuals at first, uh, you guys can ask questions at any time. Please feel free to pop in either, uh, through the video chat or through the, the chat, uh, box and, and we'll respond to those questions. Um, at the end, after we've gone over, uh, parking health services and recreation services, um, you know, I'll stick around a little while longer to answer questions about any hot button topic you guys have. I know there's a lot going on right now, uh, so I want to. Uh, we can use this as an opportunity to to take questions on other subjects too. Um, so first, I'd just like the three of you to briefly introduce yourself, what organization you're with, and then I'll um, I'll see who wants to go first, and I'll I'll ask some questions. So, uh, Heidi, why don't you uh, start? Well, I'm Heidi Garcia. I'm an associate director here of Watkins Health Services, and I have uh, been in my position or been here at the health center for uh, almost 13 years. Uh, Macy, would you like to go next? You're next on my screen, so. Hi, I'm Macy Burkett, and I'm the marketing coordinator for KU Recreation Services, and I started uh, August 19th of last year, so I've almost been in this position for one year. Donna? Hi, I'm Donna Holtine and I'm the Director of Transportation Services, which covers parking and the transit side. And I tell people I've been here 139 years, but it's been 39. That's fantastic, thank you. Uh, well, why don't we start with, um, uh, you know, uh, the wisest person here by, by length of service, so Donna? Uh, would you like to go first uh, with parking? First of all, uh, well, transportation services. First of all, um, what types of uh, services are offered by transportation services? Sure. Um, we have uh, fixed route transit buses that um, circulate campus and circulate all through Lawrence. Um, and you can ride those. You're already, you're paying a student fee that covers the, the cost of those. So you don't pay anything additional. Um, when you're on campus, you just hop on any bus off campus, you show your KU card. Um, we also have an agreement with the city of Lawrence that you can ride any of their routes. And so we've got about 19 routes that cover the city and campus, a lot of transit. Um, you also have a service called Safe Ride that is something that runs, um, it's sort of an Uber type service. It runs um, seven nights a week when classes are in session uh, from 1030 at night until two in the morning and they'll pick you up um, from anywhere in Lawrence and take you home. It's just a safe way to get home. Um, there's an app, uh, it's a KU Safe Ride app that you can find in the KU Mobile Plaza um, and use it just like Uber. Um, there's also an app for the transit service, um, My Bus Lawrence app that will show you where the buses are in real time. And then um, if, you're, if you are um, bringing a car to campus and you want to park on campus, you do need to buy a parking permit. And so we've got um, several different parking permit options for you. Um, great. For uh, Green Hall students, and, and that's, uh, I just want to emphasize again, let me clarify this for students. So can, are you saying that the cost for the bus service anywhere in Lawrence, Kansas is zero free for KU students? Yes, that yeah. it's already, it's already covered in your student fees. And so really your KU card, um, if, especially if you're off campus, your KU card is the, is the way to, to hop on that bus. Because frankly, when I got here about 10 years ago, I thought that was so cool. 
I was like, yeah. wow. Yeah, it's, and, and actually the city, I mean, it's kind of an unusual um, arrangement, but the city is very generous to also let us use their routes for free. Yeah, great. Um, and for, um, and I know a lot of those bus routes, like you said, they're not just on campus. They do uh, go down a lot of the major thoroughfares. And I know a lot of students actually use it to commute to school. Is that correct? Yes, um, a lot of apartment complexes are served with these buses. So if you're living off campus and you um, can access these buses, you, you don't need to buy a parking permit. If you're not bringing that car to campus, um, you can rely on these buses. Uh, they go to the shopping districts, they go downtown, um, you know, the library, any, anywhere really that you wanna go in Lawrence. That's great. Now, but honestly, most of our students are driving to school. Um, sure. So can you talk a little bit about uh, the parking available to, to law students, particularly the, the lots near Green Hall? Right. Um, so this year, we, we've changed some things. Um, because of COVID, we know that, uh, you know, getting around is, is going to be um, really important. And so um, students, uh, graduate students, and you are considered graduate students, um, are going to, going to be offered uh, when you go into the parking portal, and it's really your MyKU portal. Um, you'll see yellow permit, which is generally um, on the edges of main campus. You'll see a garage yellow, Allen Fieldhouse garage yellow permit, and you'll see a red permit. And red is actually a staff permit, but we understand that there may be 20% of staff um, coming back to campus. And so you can um, look at the permits, look at the pricing and make your choice. I would um, access the parking map that's on the um, at parking.ku.edu website and the, there's a color-coded map where you can look and see uh, what's close to you. Um, there's a red lot very near, there's actually um, a housing lot which a red permit is valid in. So I would just, I would just uh, look at that and feel free to send, I mean you can send me an email directly with any of your questions and I'll answer questions in the chat um, when I'm done. But um, there are there are a couple of new options, and if you're not going to be on campus um, as frequently as I, I'm not really sure how classes are going to work out. We've got um, 15 and 30 use permit packages that you can you can buy as many as you want, um, and then as you use them, it's just a declining balance of of um, permit use. Well, that's interesting. That might be a nice mix. Be, you know, mix the bus and the. Uh, per use pass to kind of uh, save a few dollars and but still have that flexibility to drive to school. Um, from my experience, most of our students park in the uh, central business district garage. Um, and so will that be available this fall? Yes, the central, bis uh, yeah, the central district garage, um, it's sort central of to district. the south behind the law school. Um, and then um, actually the Allen, you may not see the Allen Fieldhouse garage right away. There's generally a a waiting list for the Allen Fieldhouse garage, um, but the Central District garage is quite close. Yeah, the uh, the Allen Fieldhouse garage is actually closer, but by maybe a couple hundred yards. Uh, right. So it's, yeah, they're both pretty close, but it can be harder to get into the Allen Fieldhouse garage. Um, can they sign up for the waiting list uh, or if for Allen Fieldhouse garage? Okay. If you, okay, so there usually is a waiting list for the Allen Fieldhouse Garage. If you want to get a space in there, you can send an email to um, kupark at ku.edu and we'll put you on the waiting list. Um, I, I think that we'll be moving that really quickly this year. Um, we're going to be sending out emails starting August 3rd to graduate students. So when you see that, and, and I, I guess that's another um, tip. I know that you... Um, get a lot of KU email, but uh, that's the official form of communication and that's what we use. We'll send you an email on Monday with a link to go, um, the, the parking portal will be open for you on Monday so you can go in and, and look at your permit choices um, and, and get your permit then. The permits are virtual. Um, you'll need to know your license plate number and you'll just add that onto the, um, your parking account. And um, we use license plate recognition cameras in the garages and just mobile units. And so that's, uh, you don't, it's completely hands-free. You, uh, you can just uh, buy your permit and not worry about um, a parking, physical parking permit. Uh, Brian Stonebreaker asked a good question about uh, enrollment. And, and uh, we have, for our entering 1L students, the law school does it kind of a unique way because we have a cohort 
program in that first year where we enroll the students in the first year. And we've had to delay that as everyone on the campus has. Um, so, but will they have to wait until we complete the enrollment to actually um, uh, uh, get their parking pass? Yeah, the um, portal, I don't think that the parking part of the portal is available until app, until the night, it you know, processes at night when they get enrolled and then the next day it's available. You don't need a parking permit until the 24th of August. So if you're coming sooner and you need to, to get to the law school or library or any of that thing, um, you, don't, you won't need a parking permit in those student lots. So do you feel if there is a, a, a delay, uh, uh, will our students be disadvantaged in terms of, or will, be, will that affect their ability to get like the central business central district garage um, if they're a couple days later than than everyone else I I don't think so we'll, we're sending out that uh, graduate student email um, first so that for the first week do you know what the timing is Steve of the for of enrolling the students yeah uh, well we hope to get it right around August 3rd but everything is so right if, if you get it that week I don't think that there's going to be any problem I really I, I really um, we've actually eased up some other um, restrictions um, because we just don't think we're going to have quite the rush on permits as we've had in the past. Um, you can go ahead and send your name uh, to the KU Park at KU.edu email address to get placed on a waiting list, and we will put you on the waiting list whether you're enrolled or not. Oh, okay, well, that's good advice for everyone. Yeah. Um, and uh, by the way, if, if the students don't get Central uh, District Garage, or uh, Allen Fieldhouse, the next lot is by the rec center. Uh, the next closest lot is by the rec center. And that's a very large lot, lots of availability. It's about a 10 minute walk. So it's not as, not as super convenient as um, uh, the central district garage, but there's also buses that run from there. Um, one thing I'll point out to everyone, there is one park red parking lot uh, in front of the law building that actually is not available to law students. Um, that's the faculty staff lot there. So if you want to avoid getting a ticket, um, uh, do not park in that red lot in front of the building. Um, you'll learn really quickly that it is patrolled quite frequently um, and uh, that, you, that you will get a ticket. So is that correct, Donna? Well, we are actually offering red permits. I mean, if you want to buy, red permits are more expensive than um, yellow permits. So if they buy a red permit, they could park there. I would actually even suggest if you want to buy a red permit, and park in, there's a lot um, just to the south of that lot 72, which is a housing lot, but it's close and there's, and red is valid in there and it's usually pretty empty. So I, I mean, it's it's gonna end up being the most convenient. Is the, but the faculty staff parking lot, is that still restricted to faculty and staff? Um, if, if students, grad students are being offered a red permit this year. So I, I didn't even think about that, Steve. How, so, with your classes, will most of your classes be in person or will there be a mix of virtual? Where the plan is for in person, yeah. Okay, we've been told that, um, that only 20% of staff will be back. I don't know about- Law school, that's correct. Yeah, the staff, uh, we will, most of us will be working from home. We can talk about this later. I just wanna make sure these guys got the right information. Right. So, but this is generally, basically for this, for during the COVID situation, the red lot's open. So this is great news. You guys can yeah, park in the lot next to, I, I, let me correct myself. Now. Right, yeah, I would be really just cognizant when you're on campus of watching signs at the entrances to parking lots. Um, they're color coded, they tell you what permit you have to have and what hours you have to have it. Just read the sign if you read nothing else. Um, we have one more question for you uh, from, uh, and I'm gonna combine uh, Tony's and Steve's. A yeah. uh, question about, um, for example, if you have, if you use more than one vehicle, can you use more than one license plate? And similarly, um, I'm not quite sure I understand Steve's question, but if you have, maybe if you switch cars with a family member, can you add a second plate to the account, which I think is the same question. Right, you can add plates to your account, but you have to choose a plate and one plate at a time. Um, can be valid for your permit. So if you normally drive one car and then you've got to switch on a certain day, you do need to go in and choose which one you're driving and make it valid that day for your for your permit. 
All right. Well, that's great. Uh, if there's no more questions for Donna, um, you know, just thank you so much. And of course, if you have more questions, she's easy to reach. Uh, and so are, is the uh, Transportation Services Office. Although, are you guys still out of the office or will you be back? We are out of the office. All of our services are available online. Um, we're probably not going to have customer service hours in person, um, but we will have uh, a way for somebody if they need face-to-face -face customer service, we'll have instructions on the door and on our website for how to, how to do that. Well, that's fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll let you go now. Um, and if you guys can't find Donna Holtines or anyone's contact information, you can send that question to me and I'll forward it on your behalf. If, and, or even better, post it on the Facebook page because then I bet you our students uh, will have the answer uh, three phone calls before I get the answer. Yeah. Thank you, Donna. Yeah, uh, thank you guys. Macy or Heidi, I, I believe one of you said you had to leave a little early, so uh, Macy, uh, why don't you go next? Hey, um, hi everyone. Uh, my dad is a KU Law School grad, so our alumni, so happy to be talking with you guys today. Um, do you want me to just go over our services? Yeah, that'd be great. If you could speak up or, or uh, you're, you're yeah. just loud enough, but a little bit more, I think, would be a little easier to, to hear. So, yeah, if you could describe uh, what uh, uh, recreation services are offered at KU and, and what your department does, that'd be awesome. Sure. Um, can you hear me? Is this better? Yeah, that's good. Um, so we have different program areas at the rec center. We have fitness, outdoor pursuits, intramurals, and sport clubs. And um, so fitness, that includes personal training and group fitness classes. And outdoor pursuits is like the rock wall or renting out equipment to use like camping equipment or canoes or things like that. Um, and as a student at the Lawrence campus, membership is included in your campus fees, um, similar to the bus system. Um, and sport clubs, I believe you are, and in your murals, you're eligible to participate in those as well. And then a list of all of that can be found on our website of all the sports. And Great. I, I think the biggest thing that our students use uh, is the, uh, Am it's the Ambler Recreation Center, correct? Mm -hmm. Could you talk about, so, um, you know, how it's going to go in the fall? Is it going to be open? What safety precautions? How are you guys um, going to uh, be open for students in the fall? Yes, uh, we are opening on Monday, August 3rd, and we have spread out our cardio equipment onto a couple of our courts. Um, so every cardio piece of cardio equipment is 10 feet away from the next one. Uh, so there's plenty of distancing, and we will also have some in-person KU Fit group fitness classes. And again, we have a 10 by 10 box taped on the floor so each person will stay in their box and so you're far enough away from the next person and we have signage all over explaining our new uh, policies and we have floor stickers like you've seen at the grocery store to remind you to stay at least six feet away from the next person. Um, I'm not sure what's happening with intramurals yet or sport clubs that's kind of still a little up in the air but as far as um, Ambler itself, uh, we will be open and we have taken measures to make sure that everyone is far enough away. Um, and we also have plexiglass and touchless check-in that's coming with our new app. And that will be announced very shortly about how to use the app and everything. That's still being made, so. Great, and, and just to clarify, uh, you know, admission to the uh, rec center and also the Robinson uh, gym, which we'll talk about in a second, um, that's covered by the student campus fee, correct? There's no additional fee? Correct. As long as you're on the Lawrence campus, it is covered, yes. Okay. And um, would you need, uh, but I think some of the classes, do you have to pay like $3 or something, or is that just for? Um, you do have to buy a group, fit, a KU Fit Pass to participate in the group fitness classes. A one, a one class pass is $3, and then um, a full semester is $20 this semester and a half semester is 10. Uh, that is less than normal. Usually it's $50 and $25, but because some classes will be online, we've, we've uh, discounted that quite a bit. Uh, will the running track, there's a, uh, but this Ambler, for those of you who haven't visited the Ambler Recreation Center, it is 
spectacular. It's huge. It's got all sorts of different rooms, uh, you know, uh, cardio equipment, weight rooms, classrooms. Um, it's also got some uh, uh, large uh, basketball courts and it has a pretty large uh, indoor track. Um, is that track going to be open uh, in the fall? It will be open. We don't usually see a lot of congestion on that track, uh, but if we do happen to notice, you know, congestion, we will have signs around reminding you to stay distant from each other, um, but uh, that's open and no strict guidelines or policies for that yet, um, unless we feel the need, but in the past when everything was normal, there was not a lot of congestion happening. Uh, one thing I did forget is masks will be required as you walk around. Uh, they're not required as you're exercising. Um, unless you're spotting someone, you, you both, you and the lifter need to have a mask on. But um, if you're on a treadmill, you don't need to wear a mask or anything. But walking around, we are requiring face masks. Okay, and um, there is another, uh, at least one other major building, uh, the Robinson Gym. Uh, that has is its biggest feature is the pool, correct? Could you talk about uh, pool availability and, and all that? Yes, we do have um, pool hours at Robinson. Those are still being worked out with everything that's happening um, with COVID and everything. But in a normal semester, we have certain days and hours that you are allowed to use the pool if you have a an Ambler membership. Um, so just keep, we'll be putting that in an email when those get decided. And there's a lot of coordination that goes with that between different clubs and uh, Robinson itself and then us. So we're still working out the kinks in that. Now, is the golf program going to be continuing this fall? I know there's a golf simulator. Is that correct? That is open. It'll just be clean. We have, it's on the cleaning schedule and uh, it'll be open. Yes. Great. Do you guys have any questions for uh, recreation services? Uh, obviously intramurals is probably might be something you do in your second or third year. Um, our students have had a lot of fun with that. They've had some uh, flag football teams, some basketball teams in the past. Um, who knows, maybe in the spring, I'm guessing the fall, probably not going to happen. Probably though. not. We do have, uh, last year we started a fun intramural game. We started um, Canoe Battleship where you get in, it's two teams, you're each in a canoe, and then you fill up buckets of water in the pool and try and sink the other the other team. So oh, at summer camp, we would call that war canoe. Oh, there you go. And then and try to go after each other. And yes, so hopefully that will get to happen again. That one, that one looked fun. So. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Macy. Uh, if no one has any more questions for Macy, uh, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we look forward to using the gym uh, in the fall safely and away from other people exercising. So yeah, thank you guys. Thank you. Heidi. So um, your office is uh, obviously a really important office. Uh, not a lot of people are familiar with the kinds of services that are offered um, by a, a university health center like Watkins or specifically by the Watkins health center. Mm -hmm. So I know you have a, just a huge, list of services uh, that you offer. If you could uh, talk about some of the important ones um, yeah. that our students can access. Yeah, I can give you kind of a rundown of all of our services very quickly. So we are the Student Health Center located here on main campus, just right around the corner from the law school. Um, we have a lot of services that we provide right here in-house. So we always like to think of ourselves as a one-stop shop or students can come in and get all of those services uh, located in the same building. We are a very large health center on a college campus and we do provide comprehensive services. So we have two main clinics. Uh, we have our general medicine clinic and then we also have a walk-in clinic. The walk-in clinic is just like any other walk-in clinic that you would see in the community that it is first come first serve. So we um, highly encourage students to make an appointment. And even now with COVID, it's even more strongly highly encouraged to make that appointment to come in and see us. But we also know that students need to walk in sometimes and see us as well. So uh, lots of services provided within the general medicine clinic. Um, we have allergy injections. So if students are on an allergy injection regimen, we can continue that right here at the health center. 
We have an athletic trainer that works with our medical providers. So if someone has had an injury or uh, needs to have any type of, it's not just for sports. It's not that, um, you know, anybody that has an injury in, in some way that could be treated by an athletic trainer, they work very closely. That person works very closely with our providers and can provide that service. Um, we have health education. So we do a lot of information on kind of the hot topics, if you will, for college students and try to get that information out and have some different programs within our health education department. Um, immunizations, I'm sure you've all gotten information that you need to submit immunization documentation to us. Uh, that is a KU policy, but we also give the immunization. So if at any time during your time here, you need to have an immunization, you can make an appointment, come in and do that as well. We have our own lab, so in-house lab, uh, so they can perform many lab tests. There are some that we do send out and just based on what might be uh, best for your insurance as far as sending that out or doing those in-house, but that's very convenient. Uh, on a typical semester, we would have massage therapy, which I would highly promote to you typically um, as a way to manage stress. But again, with COVID, we are not going to have that service at least in the fall semester. Hopefully, if things change a bit, we can offer that back in the spring semester. But too much hands-on, too much closeness, and uh, we don't want to risk that, so we're not offering that service this fall semester. Um, we also have orthopedic services. So we have uh, Ortho Kansas that comes in one day a week into the health center. So if students are needing that service, they can make that appointment to come here versus going out into the community. Uh, we have our own pharmacy and we have a very large pharmacy. So we can fill any prescription that is written by a medical doctor. So like many universities or colleges, they may be limited to what they can fill, but we are not limited. So even if we don't have it in-house, we can get it. And typically we have it within 24 hours, 24 to 48 hours, uh, we can get that in-house if we don't have it. We also have a very large over-the-counter um, selection that is very, very um, cost-friendly for students and for faculty staff. I use it um, because we are part of a group uh, with other universities and ordering through some of the suppliers, we can get stuff, um, you know, ibuprofen, acetaminophen, any of your over-counter the med uh, medications, we can get, um, and, and they're very, very affordable here in our pharmacy. And we also have a little shop in there, food shop, that's called um, Beaker's Daily Dose. And that will have uh, different types of products like coffee, cappuccinos, um, sandwiches, snacks, um, different candy bars, you know, just different things. So if someone is here and they need to grab something quickly, they can do that within the pharmacy as well. Um, and then the last thing I want to mention is we have travel help. So if someone is going to study abroad or just travel abroad for leisure, you can make an appointment and come in and see one of our providers. And not only are they going to go over the, the country that you would be visiting as far as needed vaccinations, but they would also give a health alert and a crime alert to that country. So you get kind of a whole package deal so you really know what is happening in the area that you're traveling to. And we do that also for faculty staff, as well as all residents of Douglas County. Because again, being a university and having uh, international students and having students travel, we can get a lot of vaccinations that other places in the community can't get. So lots of services, all of that, all in the same building. So again, if you come in and see a provider, you need to go get a prescription filled, you need to go to the lab, it's a one-stop shop, super easy for students. So uh, let me ask you a quick fire some, um, what should students do when? So 3 p.m., they fall, they might've broken their arm. Do they go to you? Do they go to the Lawrence Memorial? Mm -hmm. what, what do you suggest? So if, if someone can walk into us, we will provide care. So we don't go outside of the building to provide care. So even if someone is, you know, just down the way, maybe at Robinson, which is right across the sidewalk from us, if someone is out there, we're not going to go outside of the building to provide the care. That would be a 911. But if you can get into the building, we're going to assess the person here 
And then if emergency services is needed, then we would coordinate that for that person. So there are times that students will come in and see us and um, they really need to go to the hospital. So we would coordinate that with their permission and you know, in conjunction with them, but we would coordinate that and then we would um, get them to, to Lawrence Memorial. Okay, most of our students are gonna have health insurance probably through their parents if they're 26 or under or through some other form, but I don't have health insurance. Should I go, can I go to Watkins? Yes. So it is not required to have health insurance. I have health insurance, but I mean, yes. in this hypothetical. Yes. Um, so all students pay a required campus fee as part of tuition, and a portion of that comes to Watkins. And that covers all office visits. So whether that's the general medicine clinic or whether that's the walk-in clinic, all visits, there's no charge for that ever. One time, 100 times, it doesn't matter. That's the benefit of paying that um, required campus fee, and that's the benefit for students to come in and utilize the services. Now, if there is a procedure done, so the person needs to have stitches, um, you know, things like that, there would be a cost for that. Or there's lab needed, pharmacy needed. All of those ancillary services, there would be a charge for that. If a person is covered under insurance, we're going to get that insurance information um, at the point of check-in. Or you can also do that through your student patient portal. That's a new feature that we have that students can, that's where you're gonna upload your immunization records. You're gonna upload all that, take a picture with your phone, scan it, upload it, manually enter the dates, we'll verify that information. But you can do the same thing with insurance cards. So take a picture, upload it, enter the information, it's right in the student portal. So um, if a student has insurance, we will bill most insurance companies first. If a student doesn't have insurance, then we would bill the student. But regardless of insurance or not insurance, there's no money out of pocket at the time of service. So students can come in and get all of those services that they need and they don't have to worry about paying anything that day to get those services. Um, for uh, mental health issues, say I, I wanna talk to somebody, um, you know, I'm, I'm struggling or, or um, does Watkins offer those services? So we have counseling and psychological services, which is CAPS for short. They are located in Watkins Health Center, but they are not a part of Watkins. So that is actually a separate center. We do have, all of our providers can um, talk to a student regarding mental health issues or if medication needs to be prescribed. We have that and we also have a psychiatric nurse practitioner that can also meet with students, but for actual counseling sessions, those would go through CAPS. And um, like I said, they're a separate entity, but we are co-located together. And we work obviously very closely together to, to meet the needs of the students. And just to let everyone know, the Watkins Health Center is pretty close to the law school. It's across the street from the recreation center. It's a little hard, it's next to, but kind of behind the business school. So when you get here one day, take a walk, find it on campus if you need it. It's a little tucked away. Um, but uh, you'll want to know where it is, um, and, and that'll be great. We have um, a question of the day. I'm sure you're getting this yes. a lot. Are you guys going to be, and this is from uh, Brian and, and, uh, and Jaden, um, are you going to be involved with the COVID testing once that gets run? Do you have any information to share about that? Or I do. So obviously COVID is the hot topic, uh, and things are changing every day um, information coming in. But at this time, the university is planning on doing COVID testing on um, everyone coming back to campus. So that includes faculty and staff students. We are not the ones that are uh, doing the testing. Like I said, this is the university. Um, that testing is, like I said, going to be for everyone initially. I, if someone is symptomatic though, and needs to come to Watkins, absolutely we can do that here. So this is, um, the testing that the university is doing is, is like I said, doing testing in the beginning while everyone is coming back to campus. But uh, at any time, if you are experiencing any uh, of the symptoms of COVID, we would do that testing here. It would be a little bit of a different testing um, as the, the testing for all the students and faculty staff coming back will be a saliva test. If you did a testing here in-house, that would probably be a, a nasal 
swab to do that. So, um, but yes, we can do that testing. We've been doing that since uh, March. And so we have a great system in place and set up um, for, for COVID testing. Yeah. So just to let you guys know, we haven't received detailed instructions on, on what's going to happen. So I think they're still working uh, on those yes. plans. Of course, we'll share them with you. Uh, and I, I am on that planning committee on that work group that's planning. And of course, logistics on a campus this size is, is just um, hard to get everything done. But um, we're hoping by next week we have everything ironed out and communications will be sent out. How many tests are going to be done total? What's the well, estimates? you know, approximately 30,000 is what we're planning for. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that's, uh, that's quite a, a challenge. So. Yes. Yeah, so what other questions do you have? Yeah, uh, uh, do you folks have some questions for, uh, for Heidi? Um, I guess I do. Um, I wrote them down. Uh, so is the COVID test that you're aware of, is it just antibodies or is it uh, positive negative? Just that. Positive negative. Okay. Yep. And then for counseling, uh, is the fact that it's not technically in-house, uh, because I remember looking at the student insurance explanation, it said that there's no fee for Watkins counseling sessions. I might have misread that or misinterpreted that, but um, as part of the student fees, is that out, out of Watkins counseling service, does that require copay or is that the same as like the medical uh, visits? So as far as if someone is getting uh, services from Watkins Health Services, mental health services from Watkins Health Services, then it's just that there's no charge for that provider visit because that would just be the same as seeing a provider. But for CAPS, if someone is going to see a counselor in CAPS, I, I honestly don't know what the required campus fee covers. Like I said, they're a completely different department. Mm -hmm. they completely separately so I don't know what their fees cover or how much um, they charge for office visits. Okay. I'm not sure of the answer to that question but we can uh, we can look it up. Yeah. Cool um, and then it sh we can just kind of just have our former providers transfer all of our pr uh, existing prescriptions over to Watkins. Yes. Yep, you just have to give them the pharmacy number and they can get everything transferred in and continue on. Um, and does, is there usually like a uh, copay or whatever you want to call it with uh, just the student fees alone or does having student insurance, like how would that work typically? So again, that required campus fee that all students are paying and covering all office visits, you won't have a copay either. So if your insurance uh, typically has a copay for an office visit, that won't apply here because that required uh, campus fee is what's covering that. So no charge, no copays for office visits. It's only if procedures are done or one of the ancillary services are used. That's where insurance would kick in. Sure, uh, but does that include uh, like when you're actually picking up a prescription? Oh yes, for a prescription. If you for prescriptions are just a tad bit different, um, but if you have a copay for you know you pay the seven dollars for generic or you know whatever that may be, that would be the case for the prescriptions. You'd have to follow whatever your prescription plans are, but we're not charging any sure. of copay for that. That's what I have. All righty. Well, if there are no other questions, um, you know, we're really uh, thankful to you, Heidi, uh, and to Watkins uh, for joining us. I think we got some great information here. Um, so thank you so much. You're welcome. Wish you all the best. Bye. Thank you. Okay, guys, I'm going to stick on here for a couple more minutes. Uh, if you have uh, any, any questions that you have, or you're welcome to sign off now too. Uh, you don't have to stay on, but uh, if you have questions, please uh, let me know. I'm happy to talk about the latest updates and news. So. Who's brave enough to go first? I can tell you guys have uh, are interested in hearing some more information because you're you haven't hung up on me. So, Brian put a question in the chat. Uh, oh, there we go. 
Um, can you get your KU ID cards during orientation? Um, you can get them at the same time as orientation. I don't know what the um, exact um, uh, method is going to be for uh, for that. Uh, I can ask Brianna to look into that, and uh, she's in charge of orientation. So why don't I make a note? Uh, Brianna, pick up ID cards. Okay, that was a good one. That um, too loud here for me. Oh, you've got kids, Brian. So <laughs> I've got, I don't know if you've heard my kid's footsteps in the background. He keeps running back and forth, but there you go. <laughs> um, one moment. Uh, so Brian, do you have another question or? Um, somebody else asked a question above him in the chat. It says, will only about 20% of professors at the law school be in person for the fall? And how's that work? Uh, Michael, that, uh, uh, um, 20% uh, of staff, not faculty. Um, so we, we've all been ordered. I won't, the admissions office will not be in Green Hall this fall. Uh, we have been, the uh, university has advised all staff members, that means not faculty, not teaching um to if you aren't required to be in the building if it's not necessary for our presence to be there uh that we should stay home just to keep the numbers down so i i'm really disappointed i won't get to hang out with you guys uh we usually get to see you all the time congregating in the first floor um but uh we'll we'll uh but professors um you know it'll be up to the professors we don't have a percentage on that um obviously i think you're gonna see a lot more virtual office hours than than actual office hours. I think you can understand that. Um, and um, but all the 1L classes, the professors have said they're going to teach in person. Um, so uh, some of the 2L and 3L classes are going to be offered online only. But all the 1L classes, as of now, um, are scheduled to be live and in person. But with remote learning. Um, you know, uh, possibilities. So, in fact, uh, I should let you know where we should send out the email today, um, uh, shortly after this call, um, asking students if they want to request um, to study remotely during the fall. Uh, and there'll be a pretty short time uh, timeline on that. Um, uh, we have it as Thursday. Um, well, and that that's not a, a big uh, time frame to make the decision, but you don't really have to make the decision by Thursday. We're not locking you in. Um, so uh, please don't feel stressed if um, if we're not giving you a lot of time to decide because we're really not making you decide right now. Uh, we just want to hear from students who um, know they're not going to be in class. Um, and the goal, the reason we're doing this and rushing it is so we can get you enrolled right away. Because until we ha can identify the students who are definitely going to be staying home, um, we can't uh, make the class divisions because we want to divide that up um, uh, equally. So, um, uh, Madison, good question. Would you recommend waiting to purchase books until we have all of our enrollment information? And are there any supplemental materials you recommend? Um, the uh, you can buy your Civ Pro books and you can buy your lawyering books. Hold off on the other ones until you know what section you're in. You won't know which book to buy. Um, so that's just two more classes. Um, you know, that's, uh, uh, I think, criminal law and contracts. Uh, and some of those classes, actually, you're going to buy course packs, uh, where the, which is nice. You don't have to buy a book. Instead of a $200 book, you buy like a $40 course pack. Um, and uh, so uh, some of our professors uh, uh, do that. Um, but definitely hold off on those two classes until you're enrolled. But lawyering and Civ Pro, go ahead and buy the books. We're, we've cleared up all the ISBN number uh, issues that we had. Sorry about that. Um, that was uh, actually had nothing to do with this year or the craziness of this year. It just so happened that the bookstore um, got the wrong ISBN number. So um, another question for Madison, good one. Uh, would you recommend uh, at lunch at Green Hall? Um, orientation, you don't need to bring lunch, uh, you know, because you're going to be doing half days here and half days at home. So you can just, you don't need to do lunch here. 
uh, once school starts, um, I think we're going to close the kitchen uh, at Green Hall. I might, I'm not sure about that. You can ask uh, Dean Mazza on Tuesday when we do our next uh, talk. Um, although I can, or I can make a note. And, um, so, you know, why don't I find out if the kitchen's going to be closed? Um, but, uh, you know, you're definitely welcome. No, there also might be a rule about bringing food to the building during this uh, situation. So let me uh, circle back and get the official policy on food uh, for students, and I will post that on the Facebook group. Uh, later today. Um, Brian asks, uh, I live in Junction City, so won't be going back home during the week. Is it possible to do the whole day instead of going back to my Airbnb? I'm not quite sure I understand the question, but um, you know, we don't have this, I don't have your schedule uh, yet. You'll have your schedule soon and you'll be able to make those kinds of plans. Uh, once we enroll you, you'll have your specific class schedule and you'll see if there's gaps during the day. Uh, some students will have gaps in the day. Some students will have their classes kind of backed up. Most of you will probably have a mix of both depending on the day, so. Um, Nick Eckert asks about uh, study cubicles. Um, that is run by the library. You'll be notified um, soon about the process for signing up for study cubicles. That'll be in an upcoming uh, newsletter. Um, and then, uh, oh, Brian, you're talking about during orientation. Um, well, you'll have half of your day live in person at the school and half, it's up to you where you wanna go. So, um, but half of you will be morning and half of you will be afternoon. So you'll have to figure out how that works with your schedule. But you could probably commute during orientation. That might be feasible, so. Um, Aubrey asks, if there are gaps during the day, are we able to stay in Green Hall? Um, yes, uh, we will make accommodations for students to stay in Green Hall. We are certainly not encouraging people to do that. And, you know, because there are limited uh, study carol spaces and we have students who commute and come from far away, um, you know, we're going to ask that if you can study, you know, leave the building during class, between classes, we prefer that you did. But we also understand that for a lot of students, um, they're going to need um, to study in the in the law school, and uh, so you're what you can do it. Uh, we're not going to give you the stink eye or anything if we see you studying in the in the library. Um, but if you do have a choice, um, then we would uh, you know just to open up more space for your classmates. Um, if you can um, uh, find a study space outside the building, uh, that would help everybody. So. Um, how do you, Brian asks, how do you check the KU email? Um, it's, uh, I don't quite understand the question. You should have a KU email address. Um, and uh, when someone uh, sends you an email, it should show up in your inbox. I'll say there's, uh, the website is um, uh, to log into KU. Uh, just Google KU set up email account, and I bet you, you'll get a much better answer than I just gave. So uh, there's an IT web page with uh, how to set up accounts, how to set up your email account. Um, and sorry, I'm really, I'm not, I don't have a high batting average during this, uh, this session. Usually I have a better batting average. You guys are asking some good questions. Um, so, but I will circle back and, uh, and you know what? I will put that on my notes too to post to Facebook later um, to sign up for, All right, let's play stump the admissions dean. This is great. Uh, any more questions or? But this is good. I promise to get back to you uh, and 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 get that information to you. Um, and uh, all righty. Well, listen, we've got a great week coming up. I know um, uh, Bree posted. There's a, a SBA. I think a happy hour tonight, is that correct? Or a SBA um, uh, uh, virtual event tonight. That'll be really great. You can meet uh, some of the uh, SBA. That's our student government for law school, for those of you not familiar with the term. Um, so that'll be a really great introduction. We have, uh, you'll get some important emails this week. Please keep your eyes out for them. 
on Tuesday, you will have uh, Dean Mazza um, on the on the chat, and uh, so come up with a lot of great questions for him. He appreciates um, uh, you know hearing from you, and of course, you know you can post any question on Facebook or contact us directly. So thank you everyone for joining us. Um, we really appreciate it. It's a uh, it's quite a time, um, and you guys have been super uh, patient and understanding uh, and, and knowing that we don't necessarily have all the answers right away, but that we're working hard uh, to get you those answers. So uh, have a great day, and we hope to see you soon.